Hey everyone, Wyatt here from Winnipeg Historical Fencing Club. Uh, so this is the seventh lesson of the play the two-handed sword between two bucklers, and it goes as follows. The seventh lesson, and the first taking up, is three rakes upward and three downward, and then in with the great stops, with double quarters well smitten, bearing out of the foot a broken half hawk, setting down the sword by the foot. So this kind of follows my lesson six, uh, being the, the first uh, setting down of the sword. This is the first taking up, so I kind of have them as solo lessons, though they can uh, be played with a partner as well. I just uh, show them as solo lessons. And so we're going to continue this one from where our last lesson left off, uh, where we're taking up the sword from the point being on the ground. So our last lesson, uh, we ended with our left hand holding the sword by our, our left foot, hand on pommel, point on, point on the ground. Uh, and from there, we're going to basically do three upwards cuts. Uh, footwork isn't specified, so I, I'll show you a couple different versions. One is just a, th a one step and then uh, doing our three rakes. Another one is a step for every two rakes, uh, which will make sense since we add the downwards rakes after as well. But we'll start with just the, fir the rising rakes first. Okay, so now we'll incorporate the three downwards rakes. So our downwards rakes are very similar to hawks, but the main difference is that our hawk is, a, is an attack that's meant to kind of cut through opponents, it's kind of a killing blow, while a rake is more of just a pulling, uh, a draw cut, kind of wounding, glancing blow, typically done towards the arms. So it's not done with as much uh, vigor and power as a hawk would be. Uh, yeah, so we'll, now I'll show these three rakes rising and then three rakes downwards. So the next thing we have is, and then in with a great stop. So we get a lot of controversy in Harleen because a lot of the times you get words stop, uh, where I think a lot of times it means step, uh, but people interpret it uh, as the O meaning stop. But like I've said in previous lessons, uh, the Harleen, the spelling is all over the place. Uh, you also have the word stapis. So instead of an E, it's an A. It's not hard to believe they can also do it with an O. And I think in this context, a great stop, like going in with a great, st or in with a great stop, makes more sense as in with a great step. So I uh, choose to do it that way. Uh, some people do it with a stop being a, a parry. So I'm going to do that with uh, a double quarter. So two quarter blows down the same line. So I'm basically going to do a really large step, almost kind of like a lunge, with two quarter blows following down the same line. So there we went in with a great stop, with a double quarter well smitten, and we're finishing off our lesson, bearing out with the foot a broken half hawk, setting down the sword by the foot. So this is very similar to our last lesson, how it ended. Uh, the main difference is, is that we went in with our great stop, and this one tells us to come back out with the broken half hawk, so we're going to be stepping backwards. And the other thing is it sets down the sword by the foot. It doesn't mention using the contrary hand like lesson six did. So I set the sword down uh, with both my hands rather than just focusing on my left hand. So now I'll put all these actions together to make one single play. So that was my interpretation of the seventh lesson of the play of the two-handed sword between two bucklers in the Harleen manuscript. Hope you enjoyed. If you have your own interpretation or any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to share. Uh, thanks.